Yeah. Uh, so racket customization, um, most people don't realize this, but when you buy three or four rackets off the shelf, they're slightly different. And when you deal with pro players, consistency is the biggest part of the game. So having their equipment being consistent is vital. Um, so basically what, what that entails is adding weight in different areas to make the rackets the same. And then also from there, uh, a lot of pros like certain specs. So it's making all the rackets that spec or even what I enjoy doing is working with players where we're trying different setups and, and trying to find the ideal setup for that player. Okay. And how would you go about, like you buy a racket off the shelf for those, of, for those who have no idea how it yeah. works, you get the racket off the shelf. How, how could you manipulate a racket to change the weights and change how I guess the racket off the shelf would perform? Yeah. So if you add weight to the tip of the racket, it changes the way the racket feels probably more than anything. Because it, it just takes a little bit of weight to add a lot of swing weight at the tip. If you add weight on the sides, it makes it more stable. Um, it doesn't really affect the swing weight as much, but it does affect swing weight. And then anything below your hand, you really don't feel at, on the swing weight at all. It's more uh, just adding weight. Uh, so, so basically, you can adjust the specs to, to fit that player's game a little bit more. Or... Um, you know, if they have multiple rackets, a lot of times players just want to match up so they're the same. So, or if they have a racket they like better than the others, hopefully it's a heavier one. And then I can make all the other ones just like that mm -hmm. one. But sometimes it's not and you got to throw rackets away. And <laughs> I guess it's easier to add weight. It's not as, it's not as easy to take yeah, it's, weight it's, away. It's almost impossible other than like shaving down the head guard or something. It's okay. almost impossible to remove weight from the head of the racket. Okay. Can you explain the concept of the balance point? I know they yeah. play like, like the racket, let's say head light or head heavy. Like how does I guess we have different elements of a yeah. of like customization. So you have like the weight, and yeah. then you have the swing weight. You yeah. have the balance point. So like yeah. I guess you if you can break down like the different ones. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So so static weight is the overall weight of the racket. So if you have you know ten grams in the tip of the racket and ten grams in the handle of the racket, um, or let's say you added weight, you added ten grams to the tip. 10 grams to the, to the bottom, it doesn't affect the balance. The balance is going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. um, if you go weight towards the tip, it increases the swing weight as far as uh, makes the racket more head heavy. Um, and if you go in the handle, it makes the more racket more head light. Uh, what's interesting is a lot of people don't realize like the, the really light rackets are head heavy and they have to make them head heavy to make the racket feel good at all. Like if you have an eight ounce racket and it's you know, if it's evenly balanced or head light, it would be the worst racket you could ever play with. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So like those super light rackets yeah. that you see, like some of these old ladies playing with, some of them have a really high swing weight because they have to have all the weights got to be in the head for it to feel good. Okay. Um, cause if it's on the handle and you hit it, it's just going to feel hollow and, and terrible. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So how does the, I guess, so head size, string pattern, stiffness of the racket all yeah. of these things change how the racket plays right so oh, can yeah. you i guess give a breakdown into these different elements of of like i guess the racket yeah so head size the bigger the head size the more power in general um the smaller the head size the more control in general um and it's again all everything is like you have so many factors involved in every racket that it's hard to say like this one thing is going to change it completely but in general, a bigger head size is going to give you more power. A smaller head size is going to give you more control. Um, if you have a tighter pattern, like an 18 by 20, you're going to get more control out of that. A uh, more open pattern, like a 16, 19, you're going to get a little bit more spin. Uh, and the ball is going to come off the strings a little bit quicker. Um, and then what else was it? The I guess also we can include grip size, right? Yeah, that's, that's an interesting too, because a lot of players... Now and now, I mean, more and more the trend is going with smaller grip sizes. But um, when I string for Alcaraz at Labor Cup, he's playing four and a half, okay. which I would have never guessed. He was playing a four and a half grip size. Which is he big. Can, he yeah. Grip, he gripped around pretty easy. Yeah. Still. Yeah. And, and the reason guys are going with smaller grip sizes is so they can whip the racket head through more and they feel like they get a little bit more on the ball. But then you're also, I think there's an increase in wrist injuries because they're trying to do so much with it that... Um, I think it contributes a little bit. And then, you know, in general, like when we talk about everything in general, right? You want the grip size to be the ideal grip size. If it's too small, 
you're gripping too tight to keep it from twisting. Or if it's too big, you're having to grip it too tight to keep it from twisting. So mm -hmm. you kind of want to find the, the grip size that's comfortable to swing without having to grip the racket tight. Um, and then I think also the, the smaller it is, the more chance of wrist injuries. I think a bigger grip size is going to be less stress on your arm, your wrist, and everything else. Yo, one year, Wilson sent me by mistake. Well, I don't know if they sent me by mistake, but I thought maybe I ordered like the four and a halves and my wrists were done. Like, hmm. I, it took me a long time to get used to the bigger grip size. Like, it was such a huge difference than four and three eights. It's crazy how the smallest difference something in your hand like that whether it's like weight a little bit further up or the grip being slightly bigger can affect how your whole body reacts yeah. oh yeah you can get hurt so easy like i was playing yeah. for the last maybe two years before i switched rackets with a four and a quarter and leather grip as well so it was kind yeah. of hard yeah and as you play with leather grips and you sweat they shrink so i feel like it got even probably smaller than the four and a quarter that i started with yeah and i was probably squeezing a lot and i actually ended up having like a hand issue yeah. And when I switched rackets and I went to the soft overgrip, I don't you call it the regular replacement yeah. grip. I think they call it authentic. Yeah. Like, yeah, cushion grip. Cushion grip, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. four and three quarters, the pain actually went away within a few weeks. So I think it's actually important that you figure out what the appropriate hand size is, the, hand, the grip size, because you can be hurting yourself with, like for no reason. Yeah. See, so yeah, if you can put the mic a little bit closer to you, sorry. And the, the grips compress over time as well. You know, that's why a lot of pro players will use leather grips because they don't compress as much as the cushion grips. Mm. And then some guys are actually switching them out like every three or four months because yeah. they do get smaller um, over time. Also, it does. I have a theory about the pro staffs, the, the Wilson pro staffs that I use. Yeah. And I guess it's a theory for all rackets, but I really noticed it with the pro staff. When I first used the pro staff, I felt like it was very stiff racket. Yeah. And then over time, it gets... Because I guess I noticed it because in preseason, when I was switching to the pro staff, I was using a used racket. So I got used to the feeling of yeah. how to use one. And I said, okay, I'm switching to this racket. And I got all the new ones yeah. and I was fencing balls. So yeah. I felt like the racket over time gets more flexible. Is that accurate every or racket, am I crazy? Yeah, every racket does. Okay. And that's typically like the top pros are switching rackets every three or four months because of that. Um, I think Delpo was like a huge example of why you don't want to play with a racket for more than a couple years because he got all his new rackets and uh he didn't like any of them like he couldn't switch because he he didn't like the cosmetic the one year they had a new cosmetic yeah, yeah. the black and, and yellow one yeah. yeah and then i think they even made one like the argentina flag colors like mm -hmm. the next round mm -hmm. and he didn't like that one either so he played with the same like three rackets the for, red like, and three black years. and white one yeah and even at the end is that the like, 6195 mm -hmm. is that what that is? yeah and i know towards the end of his career like we were stringing his racket every day just to string it to try to get it to soften up a little bit because he didn't like them i mean he was talking about going and getting them off the shelf and no you know, way. the guy at wilson was like it's not the same racket you, you know you can't go to ebay and get this racket it's yeah. not the same so um yeah they they do get soft over time uh for most players like recreational players it's probably three or four years before it starts going dead essentially yeah uh, but for pro players you're stringing the racket so much you're hitting the ball so hard it's probably more like three or four months okay um, what about the beam thickness how does that affect how the racket plays because i know some yeah. rackets are thinner and some are fatter yeah yeah and that kind of goes to the stiffness as well which we didn't really talk about a second ago when you asked but uh, a stiffer Sorry, racket is going to give you more fast. player <laughs> uh, a stiffer racket is going to give you more power mm -hmm. and so typically the thicker the racket is the stiffer it is okay. in general um, so yeah, it's going to give you more power as well. Thinner beams, more control, thicker beams, more power, but it's, it's essentially tied to the stiffness. You okay. can't make a really thick frame and make it flexible. flexible. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you can, but it's, it's harder to do because you have more graphite you're dealing with. Okay. Yeah. And going back really quick to swing weight and the, the conversation with swing weight. So if there's more weight in the head of the racket, yeah, the swing weight is going to be more right yeah. yeah it's going to make the racket feel heavier i guess when you swing that's the definition yeah. and yeah the and weight then, you feel when you swing the racket is essentially what swing weight yeah. is. and then that is correlation to the balance point yeah yeah so it you know if, like, again going back to like the 10 grams like if you had 10 grams in the handle you're you're changing the swing weight um well you're not really changing the swing weight at all with 10 grams in the handle if you add that same gra 10 grams to the tip of the racket it's super head heavy 
So it's gonna have a really high swing weight. If you put it at the throat in the middle, it's gonna increase the overall weight, but it's not gonna affect the swing weight as much. Yeah. So depending on where you add weight, it affects the balance point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if, let's say we have a player that's watching this podcast that has never customized a racket in their yeah. life, it's their first time, is there any advice that you can give them or any direction you can give them besides going to Mosey Tennis and, yeah. and, <laughs> and getting involved? Yeah. I mean, uh, unfortunately, like the thing that you have to be careful with when you're adding weight to your own racket is you don't know what the specs are to begin with. So um, it's like I was working with a player the other day where she gave me th three rackets, actually four rackets. One of them I'd add weight, weight to on court. And she was like, you know, I like the one without the weight better. And so I took that one and it was just as high a swing weight as the other one. Mm -hmm. um, it was, or it was very close. It was just like two points less where all the other ones are like in the 280 swing weight range where these were both over 290, which isn't crazy high, but it kind of gives you an example of you got to have to know really what you're starting with. Okay. So generally at, at the beginning, I think it's easy to add silicone in the handle. You just got to be careful that, you know, you put some cotton balls in there to, so the silicone just doesn't run all the way through the frame, but silicone in the handle will give you a little bit more power, a little bit more stability, uh, absorb shock and vibration a little bit better, but adding weight to the head, you got to be careful that you don't add too much. Just like Justin was saying, if you add a little bit here and a little bit there, you know, you can change things dramatically and, you got to be careful Elbow, with that. shoulder, wrist, everything. Yeah. You see why I hit, yeah. you see why I hit the ball so bad? I have silicone in the handle, bro. That's why I'm hitting the forehand. Huge. <laughs> with the back on. <laughs> that too. Need more silicone, I guess. <laughs> um, and then, what about the placement of the lead? So, I guess how people put weight in the head of the racket is with lead tape. Yes. Yeah. If you guys have... Watch tennis on TV and you see on the side of the racket. I don't know. Can you pass my racket, Dustin, if you can reach it? But there's like strips of silver lead on the side of the racket. I guess we can we can edit it in. But like I have mine here on the side. These were done by Dustin. And then probably some on the inside of the the head guard. So can you talk to the audience about the reasoning? Like what's the difference between puts in lead at the the side or at the top or maybe some in the throat of the rackets like yeah besides the obvious just swing weight and 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 that sort of stuff yeah yeah so the weight on the sides at three and nine there will give you more stability like especially on off center hits um that's these ones yeah yeah and then you know weight at the tip of the racket is gonna give you it's gonna increase the swing weight it's gonna help you you know maybe if you're a more of a loopy player um, so it just kind of depends on the playing style a little bit too, where a lot of times on the tour, you don't see lead because it's all under the head guard. So it just depends on what that player likes. Um, and I think some put the weight there because they, it feels better and some just don't want to see the, the, the lead yeah. or they don't want the lead to fall off. So they just make sure they want it all where they can't see it. Um, but yeah, it, it just depends. Every player is a little bit different and you know, where you add the weight can affect the way the ball comes off the racket and you know your swing path does you know matter for that as well like okay. players that are loopy or, or generally have a little bit different spec than players that drive the ball and hit flat balls okay and yeah. can you see that from the weights of like the pros like you strung at grand slams and like huge events so yeah can you do you get a chance to like take notes of some of the players specs and that sort of stuff or is that yes, kind of frowned upon? sometimes um you know like we've got a machine there typically to measure swing weight and sometimes i'll check specs of a player's racket just just to see what it is yeah um but yeah typically you know like um you know someone like medvedev who's so like whippy and i mean he has a light uh, has, he's got weight in his racket but it's got a low swing weight Cause he wants to be able to swing the racket head fast through and he's like Gumby out there. Right. Mm -hmm. Like he's, <laughs> he's doing stuff that no one else is doing. Yeah, yeah. But then you have like someone like Djokovic who drives the ball almost every time, you know, and he has weight on the sides and you know, that's a, a completely different setup. So if you switch rackets, with those guys, they wouldn't know what to do really. Mm -hmm. um, so it just depends on the player, uh, what, you know, what they like, what they've tried. And a lot of times, you know, I think, some of them are working with people that are really knowledgeable and then some of them are just going by whatever the coach says. And a lot of coaches are really good at coaching tennis, but don't know much about this side of the game at okay. all, um, which so, is interesting. 
So for, for the people for the first time, if you're customizing your number one, I guess, piece of advice would be to try and see if you can figure out what your specs are before you do anything to the racket, like however possible. Yeah, I mean, I think that if, if you add 10 grams of silicone in the handle, it's not going to change the, rack, the way the racket swings or feels. Um, it, it will change the way it feels, but it's not going to change the way it swings. So it's not as noticeable. Um, it's just going to help give you a little bit more on the ball and help absorb shock vibration a little bit. I think that's the easiest thing to do. And then whatever you, if you add weight to the sides or the tip of the racket, I would just go start in small increments. Thanks so much for watching this clip. The link for the full episode will be down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes.